Welcome to a Q&A episode on the channel. In this series, I answer as many questions as possible. If you want to get involved in this series, then leave your question in the comment section below and in the next episode, whenever that will be. Hopefully, that will be coming out soon. But in the next episode, I will try and answer as many questions as possible. So I must apologize about the wait between the episodes. The last episode did get uploaded on the day of the last direct we had in September. So it has been quite a while. I must apologize about that. Before I do get into answering the questions in this episode, I do have a little announcement to make and that is I have opened up a second channel this is just going to be a backup channel but I have already uploaded a video onto that channel and it is a collaboration between me and Nintendo kind of like what I have already done before on this channel so yeah that video I will leave a link to that and the second channel in the description and I will basically upload to the second channel around about once a week this will still be my main channel for the moment unless youtube tell me otherwise or unless youtube force me to move channels but yeah pretty much i have opened up a second channel and the link can be found in the description below so the first question comes in from pearl from off the hook so yeah pearl thanks for watching the videos really appreciate that their question is, Snorf93, would you rather have a Splatoon 3 on a new console or no Splatoon 3 but further updates and expansions to Splatoon 2? That is a really tough question and I'm really glad I am opening up this Q&A episode with that question. Now I guess I've got two sort of thought processes, one as a YouTuber one as a gamer i'm going to answer this question in the shape of a youtuber i guess in terms of my channel i guess it would be beneficial if splatoon 2 did have constant updates expansions all of the time it would definitely benefit the channel whereas if the channel sort of had to wait until Splatoon 3 for more Splatoon content. I guess in terms of the channel and it being heavily Splatoon focused, if the channel did have to wait like four or five years for the next Splatoon game, then of course a lot of people might have moved on from my channel. I'm not really sure what I would be uploading at that time. So I guess as a YouTuber, I guess it would be beneficial as a Splatoon 2 channel if the game did get expansions, it did get updates all of the time. I guess as a YouTuber, it would benefit the channel, but my main answer is the gamer point of view that I will be talking about. I would rather Nintendo, yes it would harm the channel, but I am a gamer first and foremost, I would rather that Nintendo stopped the updates for Splatoon 2 for us to get a good Splatoon 3 where they update the story, we get a really good story as a result of that. Multiplayer, maybe they might have made a few more improvements, maybe we could get new game modes in there. I kind of feel like if Splatoon 2 got another DLC, got more ranked modes maybe another mode in there to go alongside multiplayer salmon run and single player then i kind of feel like it would take away from splatoon 3 so i would rather splatoon 3 came out on a brand new console or maybe you know it will come out on the switch but i don't think splatoon 3 will be coming out anytime soon but i would rather have splatoon 3 then have constant updates for Splatoon 2 because like what I said I think that will take away the impact of a Splatoon 3 and I want this series to continue for a long long time so yeah I, I would rather have a Splatoon 3 but let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below.
The next question comes in from Humorflix, Just Dance, Paradias Y Maz. I must apologise if I have pronounced your name wrong. I can guarantee you now that I have, so I must apologise about that. But anyway, their question is, what do you think about the jellyfish? Do you think sometime in further games or expansions, they would have their own story or maybe even play as the jellyfish? Now that would be really cool if we got to play as the jellyfish and I guess it could kind of work. I'm just thinking from the top of my head with our jellyfish, with our, they are sort of like octopi or octopus or squids, how they produce ink. I'm not really sure if jellyfish do produce ink. I might actually just Google that quickly. So I have just Googled it and unfortunately jellyfish don't produce ink. So I'm not really sure how the devs could explain jellyfish being playable in the shape of how we play as the inklings and octolings, how we shoot ink. I'm not really sure how the devs can explain jellyfish doing that when they don't produce ink in real life and they do tie the law of the game based on what happens in the wildlife it's like the octo expansion a lot of that was inspired by what happens in the deep sea so i'm not really sure whether in a main game jellyfish could be playable but i'm kind of thinking how jellyfish they do like to imitate inklings in Inkopolis. So maybe they could do like a Animal Crossing sort of spin-off game where you are a jellyfish, you get to build a house in Incopolis, you decide what goes in that house and you get to do certain activities like watching a basketball match and you go to Gobi Arena, you hang out by the pool and you go to New Albacore Hotel. So maybe they could work the jellyfish in that way. I do find the jellyfish part of the law really interesting how they basically support the turf war industry so I definitely feel like there is an avenue there to explore the jellyfish further. I'm not sure whether they can make them playable or whether they could be playable in a single player for a Splatoon 3 for example but I definitely feel like there is potential there to do something like an Animal Crossing spin-off game. But the trouble is you've got a mainline Animal Crossing game coming out in 2019. So yeah, if that did happen, then it would just get eaten up by Animal Crossing. I'm not really sure whether that game would be able to survive alongside Animal Crossing. Maybe it could be a smartphone game. But yeah, that's just my ideas in terms of exploring more in terms of the jellyfish. Now, I'm not really sure whether your question was directed at me, but I'm just going to answer it anyway, just because it is a really interesting question. So Agent 8's question is, Salmon Run inspired single player for Splatoon 3, anyone? I will definitely be on board with that. And I have talked many times over the last six or seven months how I have said I want to explore Salmon Run a little bit further how it is incorporated in the lore of the game there is definitely an avenue there where they could explore what happens to golden eggs when we collect them for Mr Grizz I think it would be cool if we got to learn who Mr Grizz is and what his purpose is so I would definitely be on board with that but I guess on the flip side I guess a Salmon Run inspired story maybe you could get to play as a chum and you got to try and defeat that Inklings and Octolings coming to your turf maybe they could do something like that or maybe that could be a Salmon Run sort of mod you could do like in the settings of the game maybe instead of playing as an inkling or octoling you just constantly respawn as a chum fly fish steelhead and you have to try and defeat the inklings and octolings that are playing maybe they could be bots maybe they could be real players maybe you could have 
a situation where you have five players in a lobby. Four of them will be Inklings and Octolings. The other one will be an enemy, but maybe to restrict it, maybe they can't play as a boss. Maybe you will just play as a chum or something like that. Just to get back to the question, just because I have gone a little bit off topic talking about Salmon Run in general, I think it would be really cool if we did get a Salmon Run inspired story for Splatoon 3. I think it would be great to explore the relationship between the Salmonids, Octolings and Inklings and I think it would be cool if we got to see how the bosses are created by the Octarians. I just think a Salmon Run inspired story going deeper into Salmon Run and exploring the lore behind it, it would be really great to see in the next game. The next question comes in from April Lewis and because it has taken me quite a while to make this episode, I guess this answer will be a little bit out of date. So their question is, what do you think will happen with the events of the Fork versus Spoon Splatfest? And how will it shape the future? Now, I'm not sure whether anything will happen now. I think maybe that has just been set up to implement the Splatfest changes that they were going to make with the next Splatfest that we did get, which was the Retro versus Modern Splatfest. But I guess... If Marina keeps on losing, maybe if she does lose the last three or four Splatfest, then maybe that sort of angle that they did go down, maybe it will play a major role again. I guess if this is to be implemented as a story point for the next game, that sort of angle that they did go down with that Splatfest, I guess it would have to be implemented in other regions outside of North America. What we saw in the Fork versus Spoon Splatfest is just a North American exclusive dialogue at this moment in time. So I guess for that dialogue to play a major role, I did talk about this in its own separate video, but I guess Marino would have to lose a lot more Splatfest and we would have to see that sort of angle, Marina's characteristics that we did see in that dialogue, that would have to be in other dialogues around the world as well. But I guess there is potential there. I'm just not really sure whether the Splatfest changes, maybe that will sort of alleviate that potential plot point that they could have gone down with a expansion or a Splatoon 3. Now I have sort of already answered Ilforios's question and must apologise if I have pronounced your name wrong but their question is how did you get into Splatoon Snorf 93 and I did answer that in a previous Q&A episode where I said that I did watch the E3 2014 reveal of Splatoon and that is where I got into the game, I pretty much saw the game, was a massive fan and I bought the game day one, I played all of the global test fires on the Wii U before the game did launch, I do believe on the 29th of May, I could be remembering that completely wrong but yeah I got into Splatoon from day one pretty much when the game did get revealed for the Wii U at E3 2014. Now, I'm not really sure how long this Q&A episode has gone on for, but what I might do, if this video has gone on for quite a while, then what I might do is split this video up into two parts. So this might be the end of the video, and what I will do is answer the rest of the questions in the next episode. So that will be coming out really soon. I'd just like to thank everybody that did leave questions for this episode. And yeah, we'll see you in the next episode, hopefully.